it's morning time. Looks a little crooked there. Wait. Good morning. Let me turn my clock on. Um, grab a blanket. So one thing I have been um, working with lately is a willingness to receive. Um, I know often I just tend to judge myself about the things that I should be good at, um, the things that I should do. I don't necessarily line up with the things that I'm good at doing. And um, so then I don't allow myself to exercise my gifts because I haven't done the shoulds yet. And as I was reading my scriptures this morning, I was reading in Doctrine and Covenants 88. And um, the Lord says, For what doth it profit a woman? I'm going to say, if a gift is bestowed upon her and she receive not the gift, behold, she rejoices not in that which is given unto her, neither rejoices in her who is the giver of the gift. I think sometimes I can fall into this trap of um, wishing that the gifts I had were different, right? And um, not rejoicing in the gifts that I do have. And I know when I make art or um, connect with friends or really enjoy being in nature, those things that just come really natural to, naturally to me, um, I feel alive, right? I can rejoice in my life and feel close to God. When I judge myself and think, well, first I need to have a clean house and first I need to make sure that my kids do school in a certain way or, or whatever it is, um, right? I first negate the gift that I've been given and I'm not willing to receive it and I can't rejoice in the giver. So that's my invitation to you as we practice today is just being willing to receive, just being willing to receive. And we will just start with the breath, finding a willingness to receive our breath. So find a comfortable seat. And just bring your awareness to your breath and close your eyes. Make sure that your knees are about the same height as your hips. So if they're way up here, sit on something so that your, um, your knees can be about the same height as your hips. And just allow yourself to receive your breath as it comes in through your nose. And when that inhale is completed, just release it, let it go. And see if you can let go of any idea of what that breath should look like or how you should breathe. and just allow it to come in fully. 
allow yourself to receive it. And notice if you're holding tension anywhere. Right? If you're sucking in your belly or tightening anywhere, thinking that you should do those things, right? See if you can let go of the tension to just allow yourself to receive your breath even more fully. We'll start to add some movement with this breath. With an inhale, you'll bring your hands to your heart. And then as you exhale, round your upper spine, really dive your arms forward and you can tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone underneath you. And with your inhale, just open your arms wide like bird wings. And then back hands together you can round your spine and then we'll bring your hands back into our heart to inhale and just move at your own pace here as you exhale to dive forward inhale to expand exhale to dive forward again and inhale to come back to center move at your own pace and let yourself feel expansive, right? This big open arm reception. And then you can gather all that you've received back into heart center. Bring some awareness to your sitting bones underneath you. Feel your spine, the relationship of your hips and your shoulders as you move. Take one more round there. And then we'll rock forward onto hands and knees. If you are sitting on something, you can push it out of the way. And just kind of paw the ground. You can move on your knees a little bit. Just Stack your knees underneath your hips, have your wrists underneath your shoulders and start to find some circles here. And just kind of intuitively feel what feels good in your wrists, your hips, your spine. Okay, you can connect your movement with your breath. You can start to Add a little bit more movement in your pelvis as you make your circles here and let it be free form. You can find some C curves in your spine. You can arch and extend your spine. And then tuck your toes and just bring your hips back towards your heels. Just kind of stretch into your toes and then rock forward and lift your palms. Keep your forefingers on the floor so your thumbs will float. And then hips back and rock forward. Stretching your toes, stretching your fingers. Let's do that one more time. And then come back to your table, lengthen your right leg back behind you, and then bend your right knee. Push your heel up toward the ceiling and then kind of let it come down toward your knee. Try to keep your pelvis level and keep your front and low ribs drawing in, not in a rigid way, but just Bring that knee down and then really extend up. Engage through your glute and your hamstring to lift that leg. And then the next time you lift your heel, 
You'll take your right knee straight out to the side and then up towards your armpit and then in towards your chest. And do that circle one more time. Big, slow circle with control and then switch directions. Knee into your chest, knee to your armpit, out to the side, heel to ceiling. Do that one more time. And then step your right foot outside of your right hand. So we're in this kind of wide lunge. Come onto your fingertips and just find some movement. Bending and straightening that right knee. You can push down into that right big toe. And you can play with pointing and flexing that right foot as you move. Just take one more breath with that movement there. And then ground down into your left hand. You'll pivot on your left knee. So left knee will come out to the left and just sink your right leg back. Find this modified side plank. Now with your shoulder here, find some external rotation in that upper arm bone. Right, and let that shoulder socket receive your arm. Just reach high and then take your right arm and just make some big circles with that shoulder. Big circles one direction and then the other. Get any creaks and cracks out there. And then cartwheel that right hand down bring your right knee down tuck your toes and just push yourself back into downward facing dog lift your hips up and back and you can check in on difference from one side to the other sway your hips from side to side pedal your feet out and then bring your knees back down tuck your toes and hips back towards your heels and then rock forward and lift your palms. And just go back and forth here. Stretching your toes, stretching your fingers, strengthening your wrists, strengthening your arches. Let's do one more. And then palms down, lift your left leg up and back. And then bend that knee and push your heel toward the ceiling, but keep your um, tummy flat. So don't overarch your lower back. And the knee just hovers above the floor. Heel to ceiling, and the knee hovers above the floor. Do a couple more. Really use that glute and hamstring. And next time your heel comes up, Knee straight out to the side, then in towards your armpit, into your chest, heel to ceiling. Out to the side, armpit, chest, ceiling. And then switch directions. Knee into your chest, and then out to the side, and then you'll kind of internally rotate that thigh bone. Try to keep your pelvis as level as possible, so this is happening just at your hip, and then set that left foot outside of your left hand and just find your movement here in your lunge you and stir your hips around in circles bend and straighten that front knee you can play with flexing and pointing that left foot and just take one more breath there and then ground down through your right hand feel strong there like you're kind of palming a basketball with that right hand externally rotate in your right upper arm bone and then pivot on your right knee to bring your left foot back reach that left arm up and find your big circles here Three big circles do two or three slow big circles in one direction and then do the other Let your hand come down, tuck both toes, send your hips back towards your heels and up toward the ceiling for your downward facing dog. And play with your shoulders a little bit here. So feel like you're pushing the floor away, letting your shoulders shrug up toward your ears 
and then creating a lot of space as you draw your shoulder blades down your back and creating a lot of space for your neck. So just push and settle. And then come high onto your tippy toes, look forward. Bend your knees and take a walk up to the top of your mountain. From there, inhale and halfway lift, hands to shins or knees. Soften your knees and exhale to fold. Inhale, find your halfway lift and this time bring your arms up to a cactus. And then exhale, let yourself fold. Let's do two more. Inhale, find that halfway lift, flat back, really sending your sitting bones back, squeezing your shoulder blades together, and then fold. Last time. So you're engaging that whole back body, your legs and your back. Let yourself fold, soften and lengthen, and now bend into your knees, we'll roll up one vertebrae at a time. So first think about taking your sitting bones and pointing them towards your heels to bring your pelvis upright. And then slowly, slowly stack your lower back vertebrae, use your belly to help that happen one vertebrae at a time until gradually your ears stack over your shoulders. Reach your arms high and just sit back in a chair and rock on your feet just a little bit. Lift your heels and then lift your toes. And then you can start to let those rocks maybe get a little bit bigger as you really push your ankles forward. See if you can push into your big toes as you lift your heels and try to get your heels to come up symmetrically so your ankles don't roll out or roll in as you lift. Let's take one more breath there. And then just let yourself fold, knees bent, belly to thighs. And then inhale, reach high and come all the way onto your tippy toes. And then fold and then let yourself kind of do this swinging with some momentum. So you bend belly to thighs, arms back, come up onto your tippy toes and just strengthen your feet here. Get our heart rate up a little bit. And do one more like that and then we'll do some twisting. So now as we come up, let your right arm come forward, left arm back and then back. Let's see. <laughs> so soften your knees as you swing. Couldn't get a very good transition between those. So as you come up, your arms are twisted and just let yourself swing back and forth. And then you can play with your brain. Maybe as you open right arm up, your arms come together and then you open to the left and you find big circles. And then I've jumped in that direction a couple times, see if you can try the other. And then bend in a mountain pose, Tadasana. Feel your feet settle in a way that's really natural and supportive. So a good rule of thumb is feet parallel, thinking of that line from the base of your second toe to the center of your heel, being parallel. But your toes may want to turn out just a little bit. Just find a way that your feet feel supportive. Feel your heartbeat, ground down through your heels. Take one more round of breath. And really just let yourself receive that breath and then sit down in your chair, reach your arms high, take a breath in, exhale to fold. Inhale, really use your hamstring muscles to find your halfway lift, and then exhale to bow. Step your left foot back into a lunge, and then bring your left knee down. This time your fingers, your hands are framing that right foot, 
as you find some movement in your pelvis, bend and straighten that front leg. Next time you bend your knee, push into that right heel. Feel like you're dragging your right heel back and your left knee forward as you come up, right? Reach high. So that left knee is dragging forward. You're turning on the front of that left hip. And grab a hold of your left forearm and sign the side bend over to your right. Breathe there. And then bring your left hand outside your right knee. Reach your right arm back. Find a big twist. And then cartwheel your hands forward. Tuck your back toes, lift that back knee, and then ground your back heel and find your way to warrior two. So right knee is bent, left outer foot is grounded, lift up on both of your arches, and then find some movement of your pelvis. Stay committed to the bend in your right knee, drop your left hand, reverse your warrior here. And then make your way to side angle pose. So just start with right forearm and right thigh, left arm alongside your ear. Ground into that left foot as you reach out through your left fingertips. And then we'll go back, reverse. And then side angle pose. Maybe that right arm just hovers. As you go back and forth, just move with your breath. Let yourself feel strong in your hips. And then we'll hold our side angle pose. You can have forearm on thigh, maybe grab your inner ankle and kind of resist your right upper arm into your left, I mean your right inner knee and draw your right sitting bone toward your left inner thigh. So and push into your right big toe ball mount Engage through that right glute and lengthen through your left arm. Twist your heart toward the ceiling. And then bring your hands down to frame your right foot. Lift your left heel. Step back into a plank. And then bring your knees to the floor. Push the floor away to really spread your shoulder blades apart. And then let your heart sink and your shoulder blades come together. You're not moving your spine. You're just moving your shoulder blades. So push the floor, spread your shoulder blades, sink your heart, draw your shoulder blades together. And do that one more time. And then hold with that protraction, that expanding, pushing the floor away, spreading your shoulder blades. Rock your heart forward and bend your elbows just two inches and then come back up and come to neutral. Rock your heart forward, bend your elbows, come back up and then maybe push all the way back to child's pose. Rock yourself up, your shoulder blades are spread, you're pushing into the floor, rock your heart forward, bend your elbows. Come on up and push back. And just keep going at your own pace here, bending your elbows and pushing yourself back. You can play with tucking your toes and lifting your knees as you bend your elbows. Let the weight in your hands be evenly distributed from your right, um, I mean your outer, your pinky edge, to that ball of your thumb. Maybe take one more. We'll make our way all the way to our bellies. Untuck your toes, have your hands along the widest part of your chest. Push into your pubic bone and then float your hands up off the floor. Flex through your wrists and then lengthen your legs, I mean your arms, back behind you with those flexed wrists. And then bend your elbows again, see if you can bring your hands to hover. So just lift your head and chest enough that your spine feels long and strong. And you can lengthen your arms with those flex wrists and then float them back. And then ground your hands. Feel like you're pulling your hands back towards your feet. Draw your shoulder blades together. Push into your pubic bone. Lift into a cobra. Take a breath. 
and then tuck your toe, I mean, bend your knees, tuck your toes, hips up to the ceiling for your downward facing dog. And shake your head no, nod your head yes. Feel how your hands connect with the floor. And you can let some more weight come into the pinky edge of your hands. You can imagine that center of your hand is like the arch of your foot. Push down into your fingernails, or your finger pads so your fingernails turn white. So that you've got support, but then let go of some of that effort. So maybe about 60 or 70% of your effort is grabbing into the floor. Shake your head no, find some space in your shoulders. Soften your knees, push into your hands and then lift your sitting bones a little higher. And then push your inner thighs back to let your legs come towards straight again. Come onto your tippy toes, look forward. Bend your knees and just take a walk up to the top of your mat. Find that halfway lift with cactus arms. Let's come to a flat back, engage your back body. And then exhale and soften. Use your hamstrings when you come up halfway. And then let yourself soften. One more. Halfway lift. And fold. Use, you can imagine like your hamstrings, these muscles on the backs of your legs are like a string pulling down a set of blinds, right? And use those strings to roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time. So your sitting bones come to point at your heels, pelvis upright, and then one vertebrae at a time, your spine stacks. Pause. Feel your feet connected with the floor. Push into your big toes, big toe ball mound, and then just find a gentle engagement of your glutes. Lift up through your arches. You can even push your tongue to the roof of your mouth and just feel that connection of that deep core musculature closest to your bones from your toes up to the tip of your tongue. Inhale and reach high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, hands to shins or knees, halfway lift, look forward. Exhale to fold. Inhale, right foot back into a lunge and then exhale your right knee down. Now feel like you're squeezing your left, well actually, hands frame that foot and bend and straighten a few times. Just move, All right? And just allow your body to receive the movement. Right? You're not forcing anything or thinking it should be a certain way. You're noticing what feels functional and supportive for you. Next time your knee is bent, feel like you're squeezing your left heel and your right knee toward each other to come upright. So that dragging of your right knee forward really turns on the front of that right hip. Reach your arms high and then grab onto your right forearm with your left hand side bend. Over to your left. And open your throat a little. Right hand outside, left knee. Reach your left arm back. And find a twist here. You can resist your hand into your knees. You can push that left hand in, I mean your left knee into your right hand. And then really reach those left fingertips back. And then just cartwheel your arms forward, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and ground your back heel so you're in warrior two here. Find some movement of your pelvis. You want your left knee to kind of track toward like your last two toes of that left foot. And then open your arms, we'll reverse, reach up, stay committed to the bend in that front knee, and then forearm to thigh, lengthen. And then reach back. And lengthen. So you can just hover and really use that hip and core strength here. And you just go back into your reverse, you commit it to the bend in your front knee, and then find that side angle. Mm 
Let's inhale to reverse. And then we'll find our side angle pose that we can hold. Parsva Konasana. So maybe right left forearm to left thigh. And grounding through that right heel as you reach. Or maybe grabbing your inner ankle with your left hand as you reach long. Kind of resisting your left upper arm and elbow into your left knee and your knee into your elbow. Take one more big breath here. And then plant your hands. Lift that back heel. Step back into a plank and then lower down into your table and then knees. I mean, hips to heels, sorry. Bend your knees. And then we'll rock forward. Push the floor, spread your shoulder blades. Bend your elbows. And then come up. Now, as you lower into that push up, we're just going part way. Go as far as you really feel like you have a lot of control and don't let your belly sag or your hips sag. Keep those front low ribs um, softening in. Okay. And if you want to play with floating your knees as you come forward, play with that. Notice what's happening with your hands. Let yourself feel really supported there. Feel the feedback of those muscles on the pinky edge of your hand, all the way up your arms to your back. Next time we'll come all the way down to our bellies. Float your hands and then plant them. Feel like you're pulling them back to lift your heart. You might stay here or you might pull your hands back a little more and lift. So you're just the tops of your feet are on the floor. Externally rotate your upper arms. Receive this back bend, upward facing dog. And then bend your knees, tuck your toes, hips up and back for a downward facing dog. Anytime your arms get tired, your shoulders, this is too much. You know, bring your knees down, rest in the table or hips to heels and find a child's pose. Right, we're really working on allowing ourselves to receive our breath, receive the enjoyment of our practice. And then take your feet as wide as your mat, heels and toes out, and then walk your hands back towards your feet. And then just start to bend your knees and sway from side to side. And gradually let your hips come lower and lower. You can lift your heels one and then the other, making your way down to your squat. So it may be um, where your hips are level with your knees. You may come a little bit deeper. But this time in this squat, we're just going to stay fluid and moving. So you're not just sitting and hanging in it. Right? Let yourself use muscular strength to just keep moving. And you can come up and down. And just do one more. Um, kind of up and down there. And then we will bring our bones all the way to the floor. And just bring your feet into a comfortable place in front of you. And we'll find some 90-90 with our legs. So take your right leg and just bring it in front of you. So your shin is like parallel with the short edge of your mat. And then you'll take your left leg out to the left. So your knee's coming straight out of your hip. You may need to bring your right hand to your right just to prop you up because this may be a lot on this um, hip. We're gonna take our left hip and then draw the sitting bone toward the floor 
and then engage through that glute and push it forward. And just let yourself kind of floss here and through that left hip. And then you can maybe come up more upright. Maybe walk that right hand closer in as you just find this movement in your hip. Do, you know, find a distance of that right hand away from you that feels um, like it serves your hip. You're not creating any pinching, but you can start to get some fluid movement there. And then find a neutral place, kind of in between those two extremes to pause. Let your spine be as upright as feels good in that hip. I'm going to frame my front thigh with my fingertips, but you can still be leaning to the right. I want you to push your right knee down into the floor. You can flex through that right foot. And then we're going to try to lift that right shin, keep it parallel with the floor, and keep lifted up. Just feel that um, adduction of that leg. And then ground it and really push it into the ground. And then you can fold forward and just find some circles here with your spine as you fold over that hip. Now, you may not get a lot of sensation and that's okay. You may have a lot. What we're wanting to do is just warm fluid movement, right? Our muscles are pretty warm. Our tissues are all pretty warm. And we're just going to stir into that hip. Let's just take one more little stir there. And then lean back and take your left leg and you might want to lean to your right a little bit, maybe use your right hand, float that left shin up off the floor and then ground it. And then float it, try to keep it as parallel to the floor as you can. This time float it and then maybe straighten it and then bend it. Try that one more time, float it, straighten it, bend it, lower. And now we're gonna switch sides. So you can just use your hands, lean back, switch sides, or you can try to do it without your hands. Float that left leg up, straighten it, swing it around, bend your left knee, and then bring your right knee out to the side. So we're not 90-90 on the other, in the other direction. Bring your left hand out to the left, any amount, right? Find a place that really feels good in your left hip, okay? And then you'll just draw your sitting bone toward the floor and then engage that glute and push it forward. And I like to put my hand here on my hip crease just to kind of keep myself honest that that's where I'm moving from, is moving in that hip crease. Let yourself just move there and let your spine be as upright as feels um, functional and nurturing for that hip, right? You're just kind of flossing through that space. And then find a neutral place for that. You can have your hand out as far as you need to. Push your left knee into the floor with all your might. Feel that abduction pulling your knee away from you. And then flex through your left foot. See if you can lift it up and keep your shin parallel with the floor. Lower it down and push your knee down. And then lift it up. Do that two more times. And now we're going to use our little right leg. Flex through that right foot. You can brace yourself with your hand or you can keep your hands lifted and just lift that right knee up and lower. Try to keep your right shin from, from your knee to your heel parallel with the floor. And after that, maybe try straightening your leg and bending it. And lifting and straightening and bending it. All right, lift, maybe straighten, swing it around, bring the soles of your feet together. 
And just let yourself rock here from side to side on your hips. And then I'll lengthen your spine. I like to hold on to my ankles and then lean forward wherever your knees are is fine. Okay, just really think about letting your spine be tall and then find your elbows into your inner thighs. Push your elbows into your inner thighs and then push your thighs into your elbows. Right. And this does not need to be at your deepest stretch, maybe, you know, at 50% of what you're capable of, but then push with 90% you know, of your effort. Now, keep your elbows exactly where they are. Use your muscular strength to draw your knees closer to the floor. So your elbows are hovering off your legs. You're creating that space. Now bring your elbows down to that new place. Push your elbows into your inner thighs. Push your inner thighs into your elbows. And engage there. Lengthen through your spine, but just find that resistance. Keep your elbows exactly where they are. They'll hover off your thighs as your knees draw a little bit closer to the floor using your muscular strength. So use those ab ab abductor muscles. And now elbows to inner thighs. Lengthen through your spine, reach your heart forward. So your last time pushing your inner thighs into your elbows, elbows into inner thighs. And then use your muscular strength to draw those knees down. And now relax your legs, lengthen your spine. Let yourself reach your heart forward. And then when you kind of come to your edge of hinging at your hip crease, you can let your spine soften and fold. You don't want any hinge points in your spine. The hinging is happening at your hip crease. Your spine is just a natural curve and you've got some support from your lower belly in a way that um, is supportive but not rigid. And you can use your elbows to push your knees down if that feels okay in your knees and hips. And then come on up. Cross your ankles, rock forward onto hands and knees and make your way into a downward facing dog. Sway your hips there. Kind of notice how this feels now as compared to the first time we were here. Right, and just let yourself receive your breath and receive the warmth. Enjoy the fruits of your practice here. Like let your hands receive the mat, let your feet receive the mat. Come onto your tippy toes, look forward. Soften through your knees and make your way to the top of your mat. Find your halfway lift here using those hamstrings like blind strings, you know, to kind of pull your, you down. So you're using those muscles and then let yourself fold. Inhale yourself all the way to standing, reach high. One more brief standing flow, hands to heart. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, left foot back into a lunge. And then just cycle that left heel down. Set yourself up for your warrior two again. Ground into that right heel. Engage through that right glute to use that foundation to come on up. Inhale to reverse your warrior. And this time, push into that right heel to straighten your right leg. And then draw your right outer hip back as you reach your right arm forward and we'll come down into triangle pose. So maybe your hand comes to shin, right? What we're looking for is the strength and stability. Push down into your right big toe, engage that right glute, lengthen out through the crown of your head. And then the same with that left foot, ground through your foot, lengthen out through the crown of your head. You can reach your left arm up. And then let go of any rigidity in your legs. Just let them be supportive. 
and let yourself really receive your breath here. And take one more breath and then bend into that right knee. Come on up to your warrior two and then turn your right toes forward, heels in, toes out, bend both knees and just find a goddess squat here. Embrace your hands on your thighs and then just drop one shoulder toward the middle. Come up through center and drop your other shoulder. Do that one more time, each way. And then through center, reach your arms forward, send your groin back and just bring your pel I mean your torso parallel with the floor. So your knees are about the same height as your hips. You're really sending your sitting bones back, softening your front low ribs in. And then let your fingertips come to the floor. Take your heels wide and let yourself find a wide leg forward fold. And just enjoy your fold here. And soften one knee and then the other. Let your spine sway from side to side. And then we'll take our hands, just walk over to the left, turn your left toes to the left, set up for your warrior two on the other side. So ground down into that left heel, feel the support um, of those muscles around that left sitting bone and then find your warrior. Let yourself be able to move in your pelvis and then reverse. Reach that left arm up and back, push into your left foot, straighten that left leg. And then as you pour yourself forward, draw that left outer hip back. You're hinging right there. And then reach that left arm forward until you can't reach anymore. And then drop your hand. So feel that integrity of your spine, the support of your legs and core. So we're not worried too much about touching the floor or even your ankle. I want you to feel supported and expansive here. Like you're doing this pose with integrity. Maybe your gaze looks up at that top hand. Externally rotate your upper arm bones, let your heart be really open. Right, and let this pose feel receptive. I am a big believer that no day is complete without a triangle pose. <laughs> Take one more breath in. And then you can cartwheel. Actually come up to your warrior two. And now find your goddess. Turn those left toes forward, heels in, toes out. Bend through your knees and you can sway here. And then we'll kind of find a variation on side angle pose. Ground through your left forearm on that left thigh, reach your right arm around and then just swing that right arm over to your left thigh and just go back and forth. Let it feel fluid, right? Open your heart. So push into those big toes, but then engage through your glutes. Let your knees go wide. Feel support through your heels. Just go back and forth. And then come upright this time, parallel your feet here. Soften your knees just a little. Send your inner groin back. Fold forward. And bring your hands to the floor, blocks or a stool. And then you can play with finding a twist here. So just walk your left fingertips forward at you and bring them to the floor and then thread your right arm underneath that left armpit and reach for your outer left leg with your right hand anywhere that feels good you can bend into that right elbow turn and look underneath that left armpit and then unwind reach your right fingertips on the floor forward and then just thread your left arm through grab a hold of that outer right leg and kind of resist your leg into your hand, hand into your leg. 
Bend through that left elbow, turn your heart up. And then unwind, just find your symmetrical forward fold, come onto your fingertips, and then just walk your hands over to your right. Turn those right toes to the right. Find your very last down and facing dog. And just for two or three breaths. And then bring your knees to the floor. You'll keep your hips right over your knees. Just walk your arms forward, hands forward and long, and then let your heart drop toward the floor. Maybe your chin comes to the floor. Maybe your forehead comes to the floor. And really think about lengthening the space from your hip creases to, from, to your pinky, um, pinky fingernails. You can sway your hips from side to side a little bit. Just feel yourself traction some length into your rib cage, your outer armpits. And then just walk your hands back. Cross your ankles behind you. Sit your hips back. Lengthen your right leg in front of you and just bend your left knee and bring your left foot towards your right inner thigh. And then find some softening in the right knee and just circle your ankle and massage in your heel. And then go the other way. And then you can start to kind of let your spine get into this and just kind of point and flex that um, right foot. So as you bend your knee, kind of feel like you're using your heel to pull your chest forward. And then you can straighten your knee to push yourself away. Let yourself flow with a few breaths there. And then you can use that hamstring strength to pull you into your forward fold. And you can hold there and lengthen through that leg. Reach your heart forward, let yourself fold. Your your fold is happening at your hip crease, right? So your, your spine will round, but you're not hinging anywhere in your spine. So if you feel like there's a place where there's pressure, that that's where your forward fold is happening, back out of it until you're not feeling that anymore. Okay? You're not hinging in your lower back to fold. Come on up and we'll just switch sides. Lengthen your left leg, bend that right knee in. And start first with just doing some ankle circles. So you're just feeling that internal external rotation in your hip. Right, and just the connection of all those joints and muscles of your whole leg and switch directions. And then now we'll just kind of bend your knee and let yourself pull yourself forward and then you'll push that leg towards straight to come back. So you're just finding this gentle feeling of pulling your heel toward your sitting bone to pull yourself forward and then push it. And just let your spine kind of flow here with that. And then you can pull yourself into your fold and hold there and let your leg come towards straight any amount. And just notice where your fold is coming from. So if you're really feeling, right, pressure in your lower back, like you're folding in your lower back, then you just come upright. So your fold is really just coming from your hip crease. And your spine can round, but it's not hinging. Just take one more breath and come on up. Lengthen both legs, just kind of scoot your bum to the middle of your mat and make your way to your back. We'll just do one bridge pose, one back bend bridge pose. So feet flat on the floor, both of your knees bent. Draw your shoulder blades together and then bend your elbows. So your palms are facing each other. You kind of like have robot arms. Your fingers are um, reaching up toward the ceiling. And then really push your upper arms into the floor. 
Okay. Keep your gaze up at the ceiling as you lift into your bridge and just push your knees forward to let your hips lift. And then you might come up part way and pause, maybe readjust your shoulders toward each other, root your upper arms down, lengthen your tailbone in the direction of your knees. And really find a little bit of engagement of your heels coming toward your shoulders. And then your shoulder blades are just like little hands cupping and presenting your heart up. You've got space underneath your neck. And then you can relax your arms down to the floor, maybe grab the edges of your mat or interlace your fingers. And then let yourself kind of settle in to this back bend. Really let yourself receive. You can feel your breath come in all the way to your expanding belly. Let your hips receive the support of your legs. Let your heart just open and kind of receive this flood of energy. And as we come down, you can release your hands if you have them clasped underneath you. Let your sacrum, the back of your pelvis, just kind of feel like a floating leaf. And just let it sway from side to side. Just kind of let your hips float to the floor. And then you can come on down. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Windshield wiper knees from side to side. So knee to heel, knee to heel. Just back and forth. Next time your knees come over to your left, you can just let them pause there and look to your right. You can even stack your left heel on top of your right knee and just find some length and traction for the front of that right hip. Just do what kind of feels nourishing and winding down for you. It does not need to be a deep twist. Just nurturing and cleansing and grounding. You've got that heel stacked, unstack it. Just bring your knees up to center. Drop your knees over to the right. You can look to your left. Maybe stack your right heel on top of your left knee. And then come back to center. Bring your knees into your chest and just let yourself stir your knees in one direction and then the other. And then let, you can let your knees go wide, maybe reach up between your knees for your outer feet and find a happy baby pose. We're in our squat again, just laying on our backs. So you can lengthen your tailbone toward the floor and find movement here or just be still. And then release all the way onto your back. And let go of effort. Relax your face your throat, your shoulders, and your hips. Let yourself receive your breath and receive the gifts of your practice here. What does it take to be receptive? It takes letting go of judgment and letting go of the shoulds. And 
It takes willingness. And gratitude. It also takes a sense of self-love. Right? That we are worthy of joy. That it is okay to receive the gift and allow ourselves to rejoice in it. Really let yourself feel the gift of your breath and your body and this practice this morning. You can stay here in your Shavasana, relaxing for as long as you have time. And when you're ready, you can reach your arms along side your ears up above your head. Just let yourself get as long as you can from fingertips to toes. Bend both knees, roll to one side. And use your arm strength to come up. Let yourself find an inner smile, bring your hands to your heart. Welcome this new day. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste, friends. Thank you so much for practicing with me this morning.